Well, hello and welcome to the uh, talk today. We'll be talking about Client Go. Uh, so how many of you have you heard about Client Go? Cool. Um, and how many actually use it? Okay, impressive. Um, so at the time of submitting this talk, because the talk is titled The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, um, I was very frustrated with Client Go. So I've come to terms with it a bit better. But at the time, we were trying to extend some things that really didn't work then, so yeah. But I will try to um, end on a positive note and try to hopefully do some constructive criticism rather than uh, bashing it. So um, my name is Lily. I'm a developer at uh, Kinfolk. And um, why am I qualified to talk about Client Go? Um, it's basically because um, I worked on a few personal projects that in heavily included Client Go, as well as um, the Habitat Operator which I do at work with uh, Chef, um, and basically that heavily relies on it. Um, so as I mentioned, I work at Kinfolk. Um, we have a boot, so do come and see us and talk to us. We're basically a consultancy um, based in Berlin. So let's start a bit about the good. I hope the gifts are turning out okay. Sorry for, it's very gift heavy, so <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, let's start a bit about what Client Go is. is some of you might not know. Uh, it's basically a library used to uh, communicate with the Kubernetes cluster and includes a collection of different clients. Um, it basically is an upstream Kubernetes repo. Um, it has 563 stars, which is the most important metric. Um, and uh, the responsibility for it is the SIG API machinery. Um, and they're really nice, so do go over to their Slack channel, Kubernetes, um, if you have any questions about that. So some of the use cases, of um, it's mainly used in operators, as you might have heard of them. They're basically um, controllers and Kubernetes. Um, and there they're used to extend the Kubernetes API. So something like, as I mentioned before, the Habitat operator, the Prometheus operator, um, the Postgres one from Zalandu, and um, also Flannel uses it, but um, which is a network solution for containers but it doesn't actually extend the API, but it integrates with it. So, and also Kubernetes um, indirectly uses client Go as well. So let's first set up uh, a client. So basically we will uh, try to communicate with the uh, Kubernetes API. So um, here we see we only need a few lines of code to actually get all the functionality and all the power from it. So first we get the config, and we do that by building it from flags. Um, and if the flags are not present, um, it defaults to um, end cluster. So we can pass in uh, the master URL, which I'm not even sure if anyone does use that anymore. Um, and it, you can pass in the cube config path. Um, and after you get the config, you just pass it into the um, new for config, which basically returns the client set from where you can actually communicate with the cluster. So as I mentioned before, um, there are two ways to do that. You can run it outside of the cluster. So basically that is if you're developing for it or if you have some special use cases for it. Um, and that basically you just pass in your path to the kubeconfig and um, everything works fine. And you can also customize the mastery URL. Has anyone done that? No. <laughs> so I guess no one uses it. Um, and inside of the cluster, basically, what it does is it doesn't use any paths or anything, but it uh, sets up everything for you. So it uses the service account, and um, the token is used to enable the communication in the Kubernetes cluster. Um, and, and it's in that path in your uh, container, in your pod. Um, and it also configures the uh, TLS certificates um, according to your Kubernetes cluster's default. So um, once you actually have the client set, um, this is how easy it is to actually communicate. So this is used to list the deployments. Um, and all you need to do is just access through the client set the deployments resource. And um, you just list all the resources in the default namespace here. Um, you can pass in some different parameters like um, the field selectors or labels. So what actually happens behind the scene is that the list we saw earlier in the previous slide that is basically just this. It's basically just an abstraction or a helper um, 
to communicate, to talk to the Kubernetes cluster. So basically it's just a get request, nothing more than that. There's no magic behind it. Um, so yeah, this is all that is. It just makes your life much easier so you don't have to actually re-implement everything yourself. It's quite powerful. So um, how actually client Go goes about doing all of this, it's basically auto-generated from Kubernetes itself. Um, and it does that by using the Kubernetes, under the Kubernetes repo, the staging area. Um, and it's published by a bot. And these are the repositories that are generated. And then you can see client Go is all, one of them. And we'll see some of the other ones a bit later. So um, I mentioned earlier that uh, the Kubernetes client Go uses indirectly Kubernetes. Well, Client Go uses, uh, Kubernetes uses Client Go indirectly. Um, and basically, in reality, it's all just a symlink in the vendor directory. Um, as you can see here, all of these, the API server, the Client Go, they're all just symlinks to the same staging area in their vendor directory. So it doesn't import in a way that we vendor um, if we use it from a developer point of view, so from a consumer point of view. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we'll have a look a bit so the most one you use besides Client Go is API Machinery, and it heavily relies on Client, Client Go heavily relies on it, and vice versa. Um, so that is basically just a, it's shared dependencies for servers and clients to work with the Kubernetes API um, without actually using the direct type dependencies, basically. Um, and the consumers are Kubernetes itself, Client Go, and also the API server. Um, and now let's discuss a bit about the bad part, or I like to call it frequent points of friction, because I think like all of these things had a reason why they were done this way, and um, some of the maintainers are here, and I don't want them to be angry at me. Um, so yeah, so this is mainly when you first come across client go, and when you first use it, these are the, I've noticed a couple of people had the same pain points. So um, in general, um, lots of people agree that it does a bit too much. So meaning that you end up importing the whole world um, when you just want to communicate with the Kubernetes API. So we'll see that in a second. And things that it does are a bit disconnected. So meaning that you have a lot of client Go packages um, and this is how it looks. So this is the minimal example we have that we have in our vendor. Um, directory, and this is how much packages we import just from client Go, for example. So yeah, it's, it's impressive, isn't it? Um, and some of these packages, like I mentioned before, they do quite various things. So for example, you have things from you communicate, which is the purpose, right? But um, they're not that much related at first glance. So you have the work queue, which is just the queue implementation. That's in the package util work queue. Then you have the tools cache, which is for writing controllers. So it's not really how you expect from a client library. But once you get used to it, you, you understand. Um, another uh, friction, or another bad thing, um, is the API versions. So um, this is a question one of my coworkers had um, when he first started with it, is that um, you can get quite confused by what the different, um, what is alpha one, version one, beta one, stable, um, and what are all these versions. Like this is not client goes fault as such, but you do have to actually use that. Um, so basically it comes down from Kubernetes, but you're still ending up with the different confusing names and different versions. So um, I'll try to explain a bit about the different versions. So there are the four types. Um, so the first one is the development one, and it's not something many people actually come across because it's not actually committed or available in the releases. Um, it's basically just for testing out new features and up and coming features and doing proof of concept. Then the next one, which I'm sure some of you have saw seen is the alpha level one, but um, it is in the release but it's not actually being, um, you have to enable it in your cluster to be, a, be able to actually consume it. Um, and then there's the beta, which I'm sure most of you are familiar, like the deployments, et cetera, are still in beta in the 1.8. 
Um, and the difference between the next one, which is the stable one and the beta, um, is that the beta is actually recommended for short-lived testing clusters, so that you can actually test things thoroughly before they actually go into stable and improve things until they are. So like I mentioned, there's the stable version, which is, for example, version one, and that's enabled by default and um, all users, and it's considered stable. So um, this is the API changes in the 1.9 Kubernetes version. So as you see, um, there's not that many documentation, and I think that's where people find this very confusing. Um, there's not that many documentation on which resource in, is in which version, in which Kubernetes or client Go version. So um, that's one of the points where documentation would be very helpful, um, but it's really hard to do. So, for example, one of the things that's surprising to lots of people is that the deployments are still in beta. And they have been so for, I think, since three minor versions. But in 1.9, they're going to actually graduate to this table, so that's good. But um, one of the problems with that is that um, you actually have to then update, but we'll come back to that. So, the next one, the next chapter is um, the ugly or things that are not so nice. So basically the um, main problem that lots of people have who work on developer tools and from a developer point of view, so let's say operators or different kind of controllers um, that you use is that the Kubernetes releases happen every three months, right? Um, and you have to then upgrade because there are things like auto updating clusters and everyone wants the latest release of and for the tool to work, right? Um, but so for the 1.8 release, there was a bit of a delay with Kango, so um, that didn't quite work out very smoothly. So yeah, so actually updating your project, your project would only work as well for some versions. So as we've seen earlier, the current uh, deployments are gonna be in 1.9 stable, but if you want uh, your cluster to work for 1.6 and 1.9, it's not really gonna work that well. So that's one of the pain points. So RBAC is in beta, but you have to actually adapt things because only for it's only supported for two versions, uh, two consecutive versions, the API changes. So that's one of the pain points because when you have to actually um, upgrade your developer tools, you have to be very quick as three months is not that much before client go actually gets released, before you can catch up and test everything. So, yeah. so that's one of the main pain points everyone has, I noticed. Hence the, <laughs> yep, yeah. Um, so, and one of the other things is this matrix. So this is basically how the uh, client go is compatible with the Kubernetes versions. And if you see the green lines, it's basically mainly compatible with the version Everything else is either a breaking change or not that well compatible. And you have to, um, basically you have to support the latest version of Kubernetes or just support the earlier version, unless you wanna do some magic there. Um, another point of friction I noticed is that um, you, so if we've seen earlier, this is how you list all the deployments. Um, and if you notice, there's the, in the red, this is not part of client Go itself, but it's part of the API machinery. So if you just want to list deployment, which is the simplest thing, right? You have to actually import API machinery to be able to list. And then that tends to end up be looking something like this. So this is actually from our Habitat operator, and yeah, it's a bit of a mess to be able to import everything just to be doing the basic things. Uh, yeah. um, so let's do a bit of a demo. Hopefully this works. Uh, let's see, where are we? Oh, okay. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So uh, today we'll demo um, just a simple example of how you can actually extend and use the use client Go to actually extend your uh, Kubernetes experience. So, um, where are we? Okay. So, what we'll demo is uh, just a simple deployment rollout. So, 
Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> Better? OK. So as we've seen earlier, um, you can hear, we can repeat the steps. So basically, we're trying to get the client set. And uh, what we're doing is getting the configs. We'll be running outside of the cluster. So we'll be passing the cube config file. And um, after that, we'll be creating the client and passing it over to our package. So let's have a look at that. So what it does is it basically takes a deployment um, and it creates it first um, with instance one. And after it's been created, we scale up to 10. Um, as simple as that. And what we do is we first create the deployment. Can you see that? Um, and we pass in the deployment, which looks like this. So the deployment representation. And after that, every five seconds, we basically roll out a new deployment. And we do that by using the update. So hopefully this works. So, and you can use this to extend things like you can do canary deployments and extend this even more, and it's quite cool. And really simple, it's only a few lines of code that you use to be able to just make the Kubernetes experience much nicer. Oh, let's see. Okay. So, okay, cool, it works. Let's, yeah. Okay, so basically we here created a new deployment, and now every ten, uh, five seconds we're scaling up by one, hopefully. We should be scaling, yeah, okay. So um, as you can see, you can do this whatever you want with a very simple amount of time. So it took me like, I don't know, five, 10 minutes to do this, so it's not that. Just don't look at the code quality. So yeah, and after 10 seconds, after uh, 10 instances, it will actually shut down, and we will have 10 deployments scale up. So it should shut down, and we'll have a look at the uh, deployments using kubectl. So we see that we have 10, and um, it was created 51 seconds ago. So that's the demo, actually worked. Oh, where are we? Oh, I'm fine. Cool. Um, so let's have a look at um, a bit more. So there are many different um, alternatives or um, different implementations of languages. So for example, there is another Go implementation, the Kubernetes one by Eric. And um, it, has only, it only brings two dependencies with it, so it's a nice alternative for something smaller and quicker to do. Um, so for example, if you wanna do a small project, but it's not full featured yet, um, from what I'm aware, but do check it out. There is also lots of different language implementations because this is the Go implementation. So you have two Rust clients and Python, Java, C Sharp, and there's many more in the Kubernetes client. If you're interested, you can have that a look have a look there. So a bit about the future. I was speaking to a few maintainers here of uh, Client Go and um, other tools. So basically the future is quite bright. So I do want to leave on a positive note as I there was lots of discussions here as well at uh, KubeCon about this. So they're in the upcoming. So for Kubernetes version 1.9, um, there will be Client Go 6.0. And then will be much easier to update. Um, there will be no, at least no major breaking changes planned, is what I was told. So hopefully, um, there will be release tags. They're already introduced, so you can actually vendor things much nicer. Um, there are release notes for developers, so they know what actually breaks. So you can change it. You can plan things. Um, and also, there are nightly releases fixed for client go soon, so that you can actually test things. And um, there is a new channel on the Kubernetes Slack channel, so it's called Client Go Docs, um, and it's a place to improve um, on the documentation. So do check it out if you want to contribute something, something you know. Um, please have a look. Everyone's really nice. It's, it should be a community effort, and we should all contribute some documentation to make lives easier for people, and hopefully not need talks like this in the future. Um, and in this KubeCon, there was a bunch of discussions as well from different points of view and on the future of 
actually of Client Go and other projects, other libraries. So yeah, so the future is bright. Just wanna point that out. So yeah, that was my presentation. So um, thank you. So if you have any questions, yep, go for it. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Um, so that's a bit like you can do it, but you need to really catch the correct versions, right? So, for example, we were, we are currently still using the um, Client Go four, um, and it works fine for us because we haven't switched to five, but we will have to switch to six. So that will be hell. Um, but yes, once things settle down and um, Kubernetes is not so changing, I guess. Um, things will be a bit better, but now with new releases and everything, it quite it takes quite a while. So yeah, my answer is you just have to do the work. Yeah, sadly. Anyone else? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So uh, building uh, client Go and dependencies, there's like three different ways, like Cly, like yeah. We use DEP, and so far it worked fine for us. So I'm a bit confused by everyone complains about it, but we haven't switched yet. We're planning on switching to 1.9, so 5.0, because we haven't had many, um, we don't use RBAC, so we don't need to switch that. Um, so we didn't have to switch too much with this version. But yeah, come and ask me after we switch to 1.9. But yeah, um, so far DEP works for us, but there is um, Glide apparently is also good. Um, there is some documentation for that, whereas there is some problems with Go DEPs. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go for it. Glide works fine, Go DEP works fine if you know how to use it. Yeah. DEP works now because it's good after launch. It's okay today, but then we don't Yeah. We are waiting. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh. In the talk, oh, oh. In the talks about improving client Go, has there been any talk about um, minimizing the dependency footprint? I'll hand it over to you. Okay. Yeah. But he has done some, yeah. He has a couple of PRs at the moment cutting dependencies. So it's not depending on Congo anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that made sense, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, go for it. We have been testing the Pine Library. I found like no Pine Library can really handle, like, because it's being multiple levels, like apps and like you want to make one. Yeah. No, we're doing end-to-end -end tests mainly. So we focus on those heavily. And um, yeah, we tried not to do that. We tried to isolate the functions, but you can only go so far. Yeah, yeah it depends on the use case. Yeah. Yeah, go for it, sorry. Uh, are you using DEP or are you using Go DEP? We're using DEP. Okay. Yeah. It, it works fine for us. And also in like the smaller projects, it's worked perfectly fine as long as you will see. I'll come back to you when we do, when we switch to 6.0. But so far it worked fine from the um, 4 point, I think, to the 5 switch. It worked fine. Okay, cool. Thank you. Do, yep. Do come to our booth. <laughs>